Huh? This gentleman, don't, don't get to the brain share, no, I do. I'm not sure what question it has. So, uh, I, you come back and voice Jack several times too, with video games and different things like that. And I want to know how recording those lines for Nightmare Before Christmas felt different from recording them this, like, 10, 15 years later for, like, Kingdom Hearts or different times of voice Jack. More than 10 or 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's odd because um, I've never had an experience like this where I keep revisiting a character after 10 years, 15 years. Um, and uh, it's, it's weird because literally I sit down at the mic and he appears. I open my mouth and there he is. And I, don't, I have no idea how or why. Uh, it just happens. And I think it's because I spent almost two years doing them, and then uh, he just kind of burrowed into my, and he's there, and I can't get him out. <laughs> nice. Question down here. Why don't you come see me? I'll come to you. What's your name? Hey, Lucas. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> All right, so I know you did another game called Sometime a fortune hearts called Boogie's Revenge, where you not only did the, the singing role, the, the singing voice for Jack, but you also did the singing role of Jack. No, no, that would be Danny Elfman. Yeah, but Hawkman was like, I meant, I meant Boogie's Revenge, the video game. Yeah, but that was still Danny. It wasn't me. I never did uh, any singing. That was a, because I, 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 I thought like it was credited that you did both singing and speaking, so. Well, then maybe I did. <laughs> that I don't remember. <laughs> sensitive people because they have to in some way relate what people feel either on the you know you guys feel uh, as a character on stage or on screen uh, that's the one side that you have to be open and you have to be uh, you have to have your emotions uh, you know be able to tap into your emotional life and on the other hand you're constantly rejected uh, and this happens throughout the life of an actor. I know a lot of people who are much more famous than I am, who are still fighting for roles, uh, who still have to get in there and audition for things, or you know, who try to you know they get, call the director. I'll go in and I'll strip naked and, and yoga uh, to get this role. Um, and more often than not, you're rejected. Uh, this is a telling statistic of the of the actors in the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, the unemployment rate is, at any one time, 80 to 90 percent. Um, that's a high unemployment rate, you know, at any time. Uh, and so it's, it's, um, it's a roller coaster at times. You have to have the kind of constitution that goes, okay, all right, I didn't get this one, move on to the next one. It's almost like playing baseball. I don't know if there are baseball fans here. But if, if you bat 300, you're considered an expert. Right? Well, if you bat 100 in my business, you're considered an expert. Um, so that's really what the, the, the deal is. You just have to keep at it. And, and, and to get back to the, your question, because I digress, as I tend to do, um, is that any, uh, I tell young actors, any experience is good experience. But particularly working on the stage and working with people who are better than you are. Because that makes you better. It's like playing any sport. I'm sure any of you 
been involved in the, in the athletic world, you know, if you play with people who are worse than you, you stay at that level. If you play with people who are better, you get better, but it's frustrating along the way, but you get better. Uh, and, and so all of those experiences have really helped me. I've found that my most learning has been watching really good actors work, or working with really good actors. Because then you see, oh, that's, how, ooh, I'm gonna steal that. That's how it is. Okay? Good question, thank you. So my question is, how did, how did you get started in acting? What was something that you'd seen that made you say that I want to do this the rest of my life? What is, what, where did you start? <clears throat> uh, I was in college, and um, I was involved in a lot of other stuff. I was involved in politics, and I was coordinating things, and being the homecoming weekend coordinator in a leadership conference, and I was going to run for student body president, and I was doing this. That I was basically concentrating on being popular. Um, as some of you may identify with. Um, and uh, I took an acting class just for the hell of it because I'd always been good with dialects and telling jokes and stories. And uh, I'd been in an outdoor drama that was about my home state, West Virginia, uh, in my hometown because it was a great summer job. And I met some people from New York and I thought they were really interesting. But I, you know, I wasn't going to do this the rest of my life. And then I took this acting class, and this, uh, the teacher of the acting class asked me if I wanted to be in a production. And I said, no, 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 I'm busy. I'm doing a leadership conference. So, this and that. And he said, it, you know, uh, one or two days a week, and you'll get to wear a toga. <laughs> so I said, well, wear a toga? Of course I'll do it. So, so, uh, so I did this production. It was a production of Julius Caesar, and I played for him. It's a little flunky, right? And uh, the production was over, and he said, oh, by the way, I'm doing another production, uh, and this time, I want you to play the lead. And I looked at him, and I went, I, I can't, I'm doing it. And, and, and he said, you're good at this. And if you don't do it, you'll be selling yourself short. And it happened to be the lead in a classical play called Tartuffe. Um, and uh, also, the, uh, the, the woman I was playing opposite was Miss West Virginia. Uh, <laughs> it was also, a, obviously, a, a, a perk. Good motivation. <laughs> Good motivation. Yes, exactly. And that was it. Uh, I was told. I, I thought, this is what I want to be, this is what I want to do. It, 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 I, I, I tell people, it has to be a call. You know, whatever you do. If you're doing something that you are totally immersed in and you love, it has to be a calling because you live with the ups and the downs. I describe the ups and the downs. And they're there and they're constant. Thank you. Yeah. Say What's your name? I'm Malcolm. Um, I had a quick question for you, Chris. Um, do you have any like funny or weird stories filming Child's Play? Oh. Many. <laughs> and wonderful stories about the making of a child. First of all, Chucky is a son of a bitch. <laughs> now I say that in all due respect. You know, he's a cute little bugger. But, uh, <laughs> this has a double meaning because the making of the movie was not fun. Um, because you're working with an animatronic doll with a false floor where there are guys underneath the floor with wires pulling arms and legs and making the face move, right? And you're reacting to that, also to, to little people in costumes, uh, children in large over, overbuilt sets. Um, you're constantly doing things like, I don't know if you remember, there's a scene in the car where Chucky's trying to knife Mike yeah. Morris, the guy, yeah. right? uh, and, uh, all, every man remembers that scene. <laughs> <laughs> because the knife is coming up through yes. the yeah. seat and you're worried about your thumbs. Uh, <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of repetition because the knife angle has to be right. If the light is glinting on it, it gets in the camera. If, it, if the angle isn't right, then this happens. So you spend literally days and days. I remember one afternoon, I spent the entire afternoon just reaching for the radio control in the car, which wasn't in a car, it was just on a stand in a studio, 
and they were shooting over my shoulder, my hand, juggling it while Chucky's ostensibly stabbing me. It wasn't stabbing me, but I, it was my, it's arm acting for an afternoon. So, it, it, you know, that kind of movie is not, it's not romantic. Um, the people were great. I had a wonderful time. Tom Holland, who directed Fright Night, directed it. So, so Tom, yeah. Tom and I have become very close friends, and mm -hmm. still are. Um, but it wasn't as much fun as, say, Fright Night was, even though Fright Night's a scary movie. Fright Night was a lot of fun. We had a great time doing it. Mm -hmm. Chucky was work. 